life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. Sometimes I think that's the only thing that's important, really. You know, it's just letting each other know we're here. Reminding each other that we're part of a larger self. You are the vanguard of knowledge and consciousness. A new wave in a vast ocean of possibilities. On the other side of that door, there's a world starving for new ideas, new leadership. I've been out there for 30 years. It can be rough out there, but that's okay. Fear is going to be a player in your life. But you get to decide how much. You can spend your whole life imagining ghosts, worrying about the pathway to the future, but all there will ever be is what's happening here. And the decisions we make in this moment, which are based in either love or fear. So many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. What we really want seems impossibly out of reach and ridiculous to expect, so we never dare to ask the universe for it. I'm saying, I'm the proof that you can ask the universe for it. You can fail at what you don't want, so you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. I watched the effect of my father's love and humor and how it altered the world around me. And I thought, that's something to do. That's something worth my time. I realized one night in LA that the purpose of my life had always been to free people from concern. How will you serve the world? What do they need that your talent can provide? That's all you have to figure out. The effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. Don't let anything stand in the way of the light that shines through this form. Risk being seen in all of your glory. I've often said that I wish people could realize all their dreams and wealth and fame and so that they could see that it's not where you're going to find your sense of completion. My soul is not contained within the limits of my body. My body is contained within the limitlessness of my soul. One unified field of nothing, dancing for no particular reason, except maybe to comfort and entertain itself. The imagination is always manufacturing scenarios, both good and bad, and the ego tries to keep you trapped in the multiplex of the mind. Our eyes are not viewers, they are also projectors that are running a second story over the picture that we see in front of us all the time. Fear is writing that script, and the working title is, I'll Never Be Enough. No matter what you gain, ego will not let you rest. It will tell you that you cannot stop until you've left an indelible mark on the earth, until you've achieved immortality. Relax and dream up a good life. It's just about letting the universe know what you want and working toward it while letting go of how it comes to pass. Your job is not to figure out how it's going to happen for you, but to open the door in your head. And when the door opens in real life, just walk through it. And don't worry if you miss your cue, because there's always doors opening. They keep opening. Take a chance on faith. 
Not religion, but faith. Not hope, but faith. I don't believe in hope. Hope is a beggar. Hope walks through the fire and faith leaps over it. You are ready and able to do beautiful things in this world. It's our intention. Our intention is everything. Nothing happens on this planet without it. Not one single thing has ever been accomplished without intention. I was a little kid and I would sit there and I would try to figure out what it meant, what it was all about. Why are we here? What is this? And one day I read something from Buddha that said that all spirituality is about relieving suffering. There are generations growing up right now who are learning to lie, that lying is okay, that you're supposed to hate half the country. You've got to get back to a place where we realize that a vote is not who you are. What we're doing, why mm -hmm. we're building these abstract scaffolds of who we are, you know? I'm a Canadian American and I'm this and I'm that and I'm a Catholic and I'm a that. And it's all abstract stuff. And when you drill down, there's no you left. I, I really cherish that. And we are all one thing. Freedom comes in there only being one you. And it includes the table and the computer and the ocean and the trees. You try to breathe without them, you know, you can't. I was in my studio painting in New York one time. I took a walk for a couple of blocks and I found this wonderful little park where these guys were playing soccer. Watch these guys play soccer. I watched this guy chasing the ball. And I went, that's it. I was compelled by that guy who was so involved with getting the ball. All sports work, you know, all art works on the same level and that is presence. Meisner, one of the uh, tenets of his technique is that if you are actually interested in what you're doing, you'll be interesting to watch. And that's why we watch babies, because they discover things for the first time. No one gets through this life, it's too challenging and there's too much stuff coming at us. We don't have the bandwidth to handle it. We have to find ways to escape it. We have to turn the gadgets off. We have to find moments in nature. Meditation is helpful, really helpful. Anything that doesn't work out, I always think of as this is the way it was supposed to be. That's the way it was supposed to happen because there's something bigger down the road. I'm finding that people are, for the most part, accepting of another kind of way of looking at things or letting go of character. I do believe in manifestation, the power of that kind of stuff, but I don't believe that any of it matters. You know, this mattering is, uh, to me, a, a human construct, uh, born out of a need, the same need as you have to have you know, deities and things like that. I believe in an energy of God. Everything is divine. It's been a part of the evolution of uh, ego is to uh, spend your first half of your life acquiring and adding, thinking you can add to yourself. And it looks great when you got a cool car and you got good, nice clothes. And you've done something that people admire but it can never fulfill you, you can never be happy. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not where happiness comes from. The feeling of wholeness is a different feeling than meanness. I don't exist. They're all characters that I played. I played the guy that was free from concern so that people who watched me would be free from concern. I'm not trying to tell the people how to live their lives. 
I'm just having fun trying to transmit that to the audience and trying to get people to feel that. <laughs>